Hello my friends, Mike here, and today we are going to check out an epic library called Maleventum Pompeii, Horns and Drums of Ancient Rome. And since I make a lot of Viking and medieval inspired music, this sample library was perfect for me. So I created this complete track called uh, Valkyria uh, with my artist name called Njordik and I will leave a link in the description so you can check it out. So let's start by playing this entire track from start to end where I used one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different instances of Maleventum um, uh, which we'll dive into after I play so let's listen to Valkyria. So that was my track called Valkyria with my artist name in Jordic, Viking inspired music. Uh, now let's dive in and check out what I did with Maleventum here. Now the main feature of this library is all the various ancient horns. And a uh, brief warning, since this is a very epic, loud and powerful library, uh, there will be some loud sounds during this video, so just be aware of that. Now, the first thing I did was to uh, start the track with this cornu um, uh, phrases. I don't even know what instrument a cornu is, but it, it sounds amazing. And what I love about it, I have mixed this low minus 12 decibel pan it to the right, added some extra reverb, is that you can, with this phrase uh, style, switch the root key and play different things. So, right? If I play another thing, 
it's set to G root. And you can change just by going back and forth like this. So this track is in G minor, so I set that at G. And you have these various amazing styles of, you know, horn styles, brass styles, uh, phrases with these ancient horns. So that one, and I laid with a horn call, which is a more, you know, straightforward uh, thing. Uh, with these horns layers, you have different, two different layers here. Oh, I love these types of sounds. I mix this minus six decibel, pan that slightly to the left, and both together really start the track with this epic Viking style. I mean, th these are like Greek, ancient, Roman, no, Roman, I think, horns, but it, it, all these ancient horns work for the, all these tribal style music, like Viking music, you know, you can do epic Celtic music, epic fantasy music and stuff like that. And let's see, um, we have the third one, oh no, second horn call here, another patch in the Warhorn Designer 1, which I have in the chorus twice for G minor here and G minor here. And that sounds like this, mixed minus 12 decibel. So it's different layers here, and I even used an EQ to cut most of the bass sound because it was it was simply too beefy <laughs> and use that twice uh, for the chorus and uh, then twice on c minor and e flat major i used another one also warhorn designer here patch and this sounds like this when mixed minus 11 decibel because you really you really need to mix it down otherwise it will take over the track completely it's such a, so beefy these horn sounds now so those are the horns and you know the horn phrases let's also check out they have some playable things here so this litus ritual horn solo which i used for the leading melody to help out here <laughs> So like this, ba, G, F here, like that, uh, to basically, you know, create that accent on the leading melody line. And I paired that with another, just to be completely honest here, with Dark Era, another one. Uh, I think I'm playing the same thing, yeah, so... And that I panned to the left with a Maleventum horn to the right, because horns really sound great layered like this and that way you get this uh, oh dark era is one octave higher such a powerful horn sound uh, and of course together with those maleventum horn calls they're really massive not only that so the horns and the horn designer is my favorite part that's why i i wanted this sample library so i actually reached out to sample developer and asked for it but i uh, they have no say in this video i don't get paid or anything but i did get sent this library just to be honest about that Le then uh you have these uh other types of aulos i have never i had never even heard of this uh, ancient instrument but it has this more high range piercing nasal quality which works great as a layer on top. So I use that only for the second chorus to add some, you know, piercing. And you can use soft or hard attack and so if uh, shift the legato, add nasal quality or not. Um, pitch swell. You can you can go and do stuff like this. But I, I actually, as you can hear, it's the same kind of phrase. Layered with the, still the Dark Era horn and the Malamentum horn. But also, for this final section, I'm using what they included, a Roman solo tuba, which has a really piercing... It's, it sounds very ancient, too. Has it that you know, animal horn quality to it, even though it's a tuba. So it's all really beefing up, stacking up here. But not, oops, uh, oops, not only that, but they also have some percussion in this live drums and percussion. So let's check those out. So we have the one shot uh, preset and the loops. 
I rarely use loops. But I actually, so I used some deep drums and low drums that I recorded myself, played in. But I add this as a layer because, listen, this is just the deep drums, uh, like that. Oops, where are you? Deep drums, plus some low drums here. Right? Very sparse. But I wanted to add some, you know, of that um, phrasing to it, so I used some here. Frame drum. I love frame drums. I have one myself, but it's really cool rhythm here. And then I added a different uh, style here and this one here because if I bring it up, you have these various loops here. You can see. The... So you hear the frame drums here, here, all the way up here, and then you get some little chain metallic sounds like swords and helmets and stuff. I think. Symbols, I don't, I don't, I'm actually not sure, but and then you get these clickety clackety sounds as I call them, which can be really cool as a layer as well. So I use those here, and it really adds a lot. Listen to it now in context, just percussion, right? Go to the next one, see so here uh, when I in introduce some other stuff here, right? I even use those. Metallic -y sounds to get that, you know, army, Viking army style here. Um, and some, also some percussive hits that you can play yourself. And I use those only in the chorus, like this. And I wanted some metallic here. A bit of a backbeat here on top of the rest of percussion, including the percussion loop. So here it goes all in. I the reason I love uh, frame drums, uh, I, I don't know if you can see, I have a massive frame drum, drum back there, is because they have this kind of, you hear this drum skin, uh, and since you play with your hands, you get a lot of tonal changes as well. Uh, let's see, so if we dive into the interface now, I think I showed you all the instances I used in this track. So what you get here is, let's see, so I don't destroy my, this production. Yeah, so go into the library here. You get horns layers, Warhorn layers, Warhorn uh, Designer 2, 1 and 2. So those three presets are by far my favorites. So let's just check out horns layers. You have A, 1A, B, and 2A, B. And uh, let me just play something. Let's go lower. You can change this out, like so, right? You can map, the, uh, this one was pretty difficult to understand, to be honest, so I really, but basically you can map CC to the, I think the attack and release and stuff like that. Too tedious for me to work with, so I didn't really use that. You have the edit here with the attack and release for the layers, filters, Let's see. I don't even know how... I, I, I didn't use these, so I... I'm not sure how they work. Okay. So you can you can use some stuff there. But to be honest, um, the main thing is the levels of the layers. So you can dial it all in. And use different ones. Here's this breath horn here, swell horn. I can, I think, yeah, so you need to activate them here. And you can, uh, let's see, here, you so the internal reverb, or you can turn that off and, you know, use your external if you want to. So uh, you have some snapshots. I'm a huge fan of fast and quick workflows, so snapshots or just changing a couple of presets like this. I want to work fast when I compose. So I'd, I rarely do go into super tiny, tweaky details here, because it's if I do that for every sound, it takes way too long. Um, so, you can split also. So, you have one here and one here. I don't know why that, why that don't work now. Anyway, so that's the horn slayers, the first patch, but I actually prefer the war horn designer 1 and 2, because here you get three layers like this, you can uh, use soft lace, 
uh, here can change release oh, okay so now it will be loud it will be loud warning warning even though I have it so let's just D is it I mean these kinds of uber powerful horn sounds is perfect for the beginning of a new section for example or the beginning of the track it's like super I am powerful I'm here it's like authority ball power type of sound and here you actually have a randomized button that I love so I don't even need to go in that is I wish more developers added a randomization feature especially for the layers stuff like that can create oh so you can actually change this one I just found out about you can randomize all you can pan left right for example I mean, it's so it's so mega powerful it's insane uh, you of course have some snapshots you can choose between And what I love also with, with these horn sounds is you can hold down the note and then if I release it, you get the release sound. Look at the waveform. Which sounds very natural, still. Which is tricky to do with these kinds of sounds. So you have Warhorns Designer 1 and 2. I'm actually not sure what's different about them because the, the presets looks the same, but uh, I, I guess it's different types of uh, you know horns here. I mean, that sounds, it's like an ancient army goes to space. It's like a mix of, I hear some, these types of sounds, actually, I I get some, uh, oh, that's a long release. I get some, oh, it's too much, it's too much. I get some Dune vibes, you know, the movie Dune uh, with these kinds of, It's something primal, but yet also science fiction, you know, vibe I get from these types of sounds. Uh, again, you can just go to the snapshots if you have those installed. And then um, also, yeah, this, this is the way I actually work. Just work something out. Oh, it's so damn powerful. It's so loud. Oh, I, I warn you. I warn you that has some acute owlos daunting horns. Okay, let's go to the next patch. So you have some Olos, uh, which I told you about earlier. These kinds of... This one you can play like this. I can shift to soft attack, slow legato, nasal quality, perhaps some... That is an interesting sound to add as a layer to the horns. All those drone reads layers. With a massive reverb. Let's turn off the reverb so we can hear. I, I never heard of the uh, Olos uh, instrument, but I, I checked it out on Wikipedia. It's a really cool, you know, double chambers style reed instrument. I don't know if it's actually used in modern days. This one, another one you can play. Litus Ritual Horn solo patch. So you get these key switches down here, which change the attack or the release, which is really cool because you have the straight. You can have the oh, ohm one. Uh, I don't know what it means. Ohm. Ohm two. Start. Listen to the beginning. You get the little rrr, and then the next one, and then next one. And on the release, let's listen to the release short. Om 1. Om 2. I release. Right? So you can add some variation into the phrase phrasing. Constant, you can make dynamic swell up. Dynamic swell down. 
Uh, but I mean, the, the the way you can play it. Just release. With horns, they really excel with this, you know, long notes, then with spacing, you know, giving the power to your composition. So let's do G to D. Imagine some other uh, instrument playing that leading melody. So let's see. Then we have Roman tuba, you know, that one I played in the track as well. Really this brassy, piercing, animal, animalistic sound for a tuba. And you can change the attack, bend down. Really create that ancient sound. Bit of a Middle Eastern vibe for me, but Middle Eastern have that ancient sound still. SFX horns. So here you have this cool little pad here you can do. No, sorry about that. That was the waveform. Let's see, what can I actually? No, it's just the marker. But I mean, here you get. Again, various types of horns, but global pitch. So let's see, this track is in G, so let's move that up to G. Remember this, and then. That one, or perhaps that's this is the way I would like to work. Why did I why did I get Oh I set the release? Sorry about that. I mean it, it's so massive. I I don't know if there are any other sample libraries on the market with this amount of real horns played in this epic ancient um, you know medieval medieval ancient sound uh, then you get uh, phrases so phrases i actually used not only the drums and where was the 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 corner phrases oh so this is the corner phrases that i showed that in the beginning here so set the root key and then let's say the sharp do another one I'm actually not sure if this uh, root key is automatable. Yeah, so you can learn MIDI CC automations. So you can change the key uh, during the track. A bit tedious, but it would work. Uh, so... I mean, these types of phrases you could not really play on any modern brass or horn sample library. You need the phrases, you need the recordings. The flute phrases, I actually use them right here. This little... Uh, Native American flute. I think it is. Sounds like that. And here also, this little cool. Overblown little flute phrase. All right, uh, let's see, where were we? There. So you can, again, set the... Root pitch and go like that, and it's the same for the rest of the instrument. So, the patches set the root key and just choose a phrase. Or this one. That was the oros. Uh, you have some whistling. Very sharp, piercing whistling here. Wow, lots of airy, wispy quality. This saring, sarings. Let's see. Some phrases here. And then we go to the percussion loops uh, that I showed you in, in the beginning, which, which I used, the frame drum loops. So frame drum here on the red, then you have the chainy metallic sounds, and then the clickety-clackety sounds there. Uh, then, finally, you have the percussion one-shots, which you can play. So. So it's a lot of latency now, so it's hard to play live because I record. But that one I used as well. Uh, so all in all, my conclusion is that if you need that ancient, powerful war horn sound, this library is it, my friends. It's especially the war horn designer one, two, uh, SX war horns, that kind of stuff. Also the Roman tuba and 
Also, some of these, uh, you know, the corny phrases, everything stacked up really creates that super powerful sound that you can use sparingly in your composition to add some power, beefiness, and epicness. Works great for my Viking music, but any medieval ancient sounding music or even modern trailer music can be used for the bram design uh, layered with another modern brass library, for example. So that is Maleventum, uh, which is the third in the series, I think. It's called Pompeii. They also have the number one, I think, is Viking, and two is Native American flutes and stuff. Uh, I highly recommend this sample library, so go check it out in the description, and I will see you in the next video, my friends.